the Detroit Lions. We have the comeback kids. We have Detroit versus everybody, Dan Campbell, Jared Goff, and a team seemingly coming together, peaking at the right time where you had injuries to David Montgomery throughout the year. Ali McNeil, CJ Garner Johnson, Brian Branch was also banged up throughout the season. You had Amon Ra uh, banged up throughout the year. You had um, Craig Reynolds go down. You had Jamison Williams get suspended because he didn't leave the parking lot this season. And then you have all of that seemingly coming together. And then you have a San Francisco 49ers team who we kind of raised a question mark in during that NFC title game where it felt like the Packers gave that game away. They left six points at least on the board. 26 Savage dropped an interception. And then Debo Samuel goes down, which seems like he has been the heartbeat of this offense. He was one of the players missing in the equation where they lost three straight games. And that defense just doesn't look like the dominant dynamic defense that has at some points in the regular season with the Detroit Lions. Now, finally having no pressure on them because you didn't have the pressure of winning your first playoff game versus the Rams. And then you didn't have the pressure of being the favorites by six points versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is a game that was inexcusable to lose at home. But now you're on the road, all chips are off, all bets are off. And it's like, okay, now if we go there, we're the ones playing spoiler, all the pressures on the San Francisco 49ers and they don't have their best piece on offense. Yeah, I honestly think that this is going to be the most shocking game of the week because we have this Ravens and Chiefs game going down to the wire. I actually think this is a game that could get ugly quickly. And I don't mean ugly as in blowout, but I think that this is a game that the Lions can control. You think about they get the coin toss and they get a lead. We talked about the Packers and their recipe for beating the Niners. They know what it takes to beat them. The 49ers... I think of all of these teams, right, I think that every team, like Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs, that's a Super Bowl team because he's there. The Ravens, that defense, Lamar Jackson, that's a winning team. And then the Lions, the difference between them and the 49ers for me is that the 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 Lions play so much harder. They play with so much heart. They play with so much grit. And I think that you look at them and you're like, that's a team that can win a Super Bowl. And the 49ers have the talent, the talent to beat them, absolutely. But this is a team that has shown to be beatable. They had a three-game losing streak, and then even this last game wasn't overly impressive of a win, and I think the Packers deserve to win that game. So I'm looking at it here. I'm like, okay, well, you have a CMC. If the Lions can stop the run with Christian McCaffrey, if they can contain him kind of similar to parts of the game that the Packers did, okay, that's upside for the uh, mm-hmm. Lions, because I think that the Lions can run on the 49ers. And then we look to the secondary. Okay, well, without Debo Samuel, then they have to rely on George Kittle and Brendan Ayuk. It's going to be a tall task. I'm not saying this is going to be a blowout, but I do think it's going to be a, a situation where the Lions can put up points and then they can mitigate that 49ers offense. If the Lions get a lead, what happens to Kyle Shanahan? The yeah. brim goes down. Suddenly it goes from his eyebrows to his nose, to his schnoz, and suddenly, where in the world is Kyle Shanahan? So I think that this is a game, and I'm going to say it, I think the Lions are going to upset the 49ers in the conference championship. So you think this is the type of game where it's like the meme of Homer Simpson just disappearing into the bush, but figuratively, but that's Kyle Shanahan in this game? Yeah, because, I mean, the 49ers, they've made a bunch of NFC title games, but what's amounted to them is one Super Bowl appearance, where they blew a 10-point lead to Patrick Mahomes. And is it uncharacteristic for Kyle Shanahan to maybe be a little too conservative when it matters? Yeah. Is it unrealistic for him to have poor clock management issues? No. And then Brock Purdy. We're Brock Purdy enthusiasts on the show, and I think he gets way too much hate. However, we're talking about tit for tat. Like, who would I rather have? I'd rather have Jared Goff here. I think that he's the better game manager. And without Debo Samuel, I think the, the Lions have better receivers right now. Yeah, and then you look at this game matchup for matchup, especially if Debo Samuel isn't a go for this game or he's not even 100% himself, then the best receiver in this game becomes who was the number four receiver 
this year. That's going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Packers show that you can exploit some holes in the San Francisco 49ers defense. And there is opportunities to take advantage of that. And then you're like, okay, well, what did the Packers do well in that game? You had number 31, a player that no one had heard of coming into that game. And Aaron Jones were able to successfully run the ball in that game against the Green Bay Packers. Well, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, as much as I love Aaron Jones, as a unit, they're both better running backs as a whole, where you saw that electric Jameer Gibbs touchdown run versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then you have Dan Campbell, as opposed to Kyle Shanahan, giving those motivational speeches, talking about how proud he is of them, making sure he reinstates how epic this playoff run is, kind of reeling them in, saying how hard it is to win playoff games. So you have the motivation aspect and then just the will if this is a game that's going to come down to who wants it more you have to go with the Detroit Lions especially because what they focused on doing the most this offseason was if we can't be a great total defense what we're going to do is stop the run and then we're going to be really good in the red zone and then we saw the San Francisco 49ers without Debo Samuel they're not going to have those massive plays where they're going to burn the Lions it's going to be George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk reliant but they're going to focus on shutting down Christian McCaffrey and then they're going to make Brock Purdy throw the ball in those situations and now that you have someone back like a CJ Garner Johnson, who's not going to drop that interception like 21 Savage did. And you have their defense coming together with Aiden Hutchinson stepping up on big third downs. You have the Lions weathering the storm in those games. You have Jared Goff with the familiarity of the San Francisco 49ers. And then I feel like with the combination of heart storylines and then everyone expecting the 49ers to win and just this NFL season has been upside down and backwards. Everyone who is written off is coming back for vengeance this year, including the Lions, including Lamar Jackson. It just makes sense that the Lions would go there and upset the 49ers because what they do well, stop the run, what the 49ers want to do, run it with McCaffrey to take the pressure off of Brock Purdy, but all of it's going to be on him and Kyle Shanahan, and even if the Lions get a lead, the San Francisco 49ers still haven't proven that they can come back in a big moment outside of that Packers game that the Packers simply just gave away in that moment. So I think everything is lining up for the Lions this year. Yeah. And plus think of the four teams that remain and you kind of alluded to this just now, the chiefs all year. It's been, this is the year the chiefs are vulnerable. There's a chip on their shoulder. People don't believe in the chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is an, uh, is the underdog in the AFC championship game. First road game for the, Ravens, right? Lamar Jackson, nine teams passed on him. They had an opportunity to trade for him and sign him to a long-term deal. He had to fight tooth and nail to get the contract that he deserved from the Ravens. There's a chip on the shoulder for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens also to prove that they can beat Patrick Mahomes. And then for the Lions, we've already said it before. This is a team that is reversing history. They had to sacrifice the Detroit Pistons. Hate to see it, the sacrifice that was made there. But for the Lions, they have changing history, being underdogs, nobody taking them seriously in the playoffs. They had them as the seventh best team entering the divisional round. That's crazy. And then we look at the 49ers. Everyone's been putting them as the Super Bowl favorites all year long. They have the most talented roster. They have pretty much everybody paid. Christian McCaffrey's paid. Debo's paid. Kittle's paid. Everyone on that defense is paid. They're one of those teams that has been booked into the Super Bowl since the preseason. And I think of all of the teams, they're the ones with the least amount of chips on their shoulder. If anything, they have the most pressure. Mahomes has already won a Super Bowl. Lamar is already legit. And then the Lions have already proven themselves to be worthy adversaries. The 49ers are facing the most pressure, and they also have the least amount of a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, they have the least amount of chip, and with Kyle Shanahan, all the pressure is really on him in this game because Dan Campbell and the Lions lose. I mean, the first run you had since 1957 where you won two playoff games no harm no foul there you lost to the better team if you're Kyle Shanahan and you lose though you're the better team and you lost and you couldn't beat Sean McVay in the conference title game when you own Sean McVay he's a player you've owned every single time you guys face off against each other you had a 10 point lead in the Super Bowl you blew that against Patrick Mahomes and he was able to come back on you and then also 
you're a part of that 28 to three collapse with the Atlanta Falcons. So with Kyle Shanahan, he is one of the best coaches in the league, but I've compared it to the situation with Andy Reid in Philadelphia, where he gets the conference championships. He can get to some Super Bowls, but sometimes the play calling and clock management, you just raise an eyebrow and kind of have a question mark there. Yeah. And then ultimately who wins the Super Bowls, great quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jared Goff. I do think Brock Purdy is the lesser of the four, not because I don't think he's great, but I do think I'd take all the other three quarterbacks above him. Yeah. So with the chip on the shoulder, with the questions with Kyle Shanahan, with the most pressure of any team in the playoffs right now, I think the this is calling for an upset. Similar, we called an upset with the Cowboys game. We called an upset with a number of games this postseason. And uh, going into this, I am um nine and one in our playoff predictions so i'm gonna bank on it again i think the lions upset the 49ers and make it to the super bowl 